Welcome to Life Sciences. In this lesson, we explore the history of life on Earth. Over billions of years, Earth's environment has changed drastically, shaping the evolution of all living organisms. Today, we'll uncover four key influences, changes in the atmosphere, changes in climate, geological events, and fossil evidence. When Earth first formed, oxygen in the atmosphere was almost non-existent. Early life forms, such as prokaryotes, survived without oxygen. They were anaerobic bacteria. Later, blue-green bacteria, or cyanobacteria, appeared. They used carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and released oxygen. Slowly, oxygen levels rose, and this allowed aerobic organisms to evolve. This rise in oxygen dramatically increased the variety of life forms on Earth. Primitive Earth, anaerobic bacteria, cyanobacteria, oxygen buildup, diverse organisms. Another powerful force shaping life was climate change. During long geological periods known as ice ages, Earth's temperature dropped drastically. Many species became extinct. Some migrated to warmer areas. As ice expanded, sea levels dropped, exposing more land. These changes forced species to adapt, migrate, or die out. Climate shifts changed habitats and survival strategies. Earth's continents have not always looked the way they do today. The theory of continental drift explains that continents slowly move across the planet. About 250 million years ago, all continents were joined as one giant landmass called Pangaea. Pangaea later split into two supercontinents, Laurasia in the north, Gondwanaland in the south. Gondwanaland included what is now Africa. Over time, these split further into today's continents. These shifts changed climate, habitats, and led to extinctions and new evolutionary paths. Geological events are a major driver of evolutionary change. We can read these changes in the fossil record. Fossils are the preserved remains, imprints, or traces of ancient organisms. They provide evidence of life millions of years ago and help us reconstruct past climates and environments. For example, fossils of bivalves and ammonites found in KwaZulu-Natal suggest the area was once covered by sea. Whale fossils in the Sahara Desert show that region was once underwater. Trilobite fossils in the Karoo prove that seas once covered high-lying land. These discoveries help scientists piece together the puzzle of life's history. Fossil evidence combined with geology and climate data builds the narrative of Earth's past. Every fossil tells part of the story. To study the history of life, scientists use scientific terminology. Name, state the term, differentiate, show the differences, tabulate, put answers in a table, describe, state main points, explain, give cause and effect, compare, show similarities and differences. Practicing these skills will prepare you for exam questions on this topic. Welcome to our journey through the history of life on Earth. In this lesson, we'll focus on two key sections, the geological time scale, Earth's calendar of life, and the mass extinctions that reshaped it. These events reveal not only how life began, but also how it adapted to challenges over billions of years. Scientists estimate that Earth is about 4.6 billion years old. To make sense of this immense history, they divided it into units of time called the geological time scale. This time scale highlights major changes in life forms, climate, and geology. The time scale is divided into three major eras. Paleozoic, the ancient life era, when most major animal groups first appeared. Mesozoic, the middle life era, famous as the age of dinosaurs. Cenozoic, the recent life era, dominated by mammals and eventually humans. Before these eras, life existed in the Precambrian period, where the first simple prokaryotes and eukaryotes evolved. During the Precambrian, 4.6 to 570 million years ago, Earth saw the rise of the first living organisms, prokaryotes, eukaryotes, and simple invertebrates. Then came the Cambrian explosion, a burst of evolutionary activity where most major animal groups appeared in a short time. It was the beginning of life as we know it. In the Paleozoic era, first plants and animals moved onto land. Amphibians, insects, and reptiles evolved. Ferns and gymnosperms dominated. In the Mesozoic era, dinosaurs ruled. The first birds and mammals appeared. Flowering plants spread across the globe. In the Cenozoic era, mammals and birds diversified. Primates evolved. Modern humans eventually appeared about 200,000 years ago. 
Life on Earth has not been a smooth journey. Mass extinctions are periods when vast numbers of species disappeared in a relatively short time. These events drastically changed ecosystems and paved the way for new species to thrive. There have been at least five major mass extinctions in Earth's history. Two stand out. The Permian-Triassic extinction, approximately 250 million years ago. The greatest extinction of all, wiping out nearly 90% of life on Earth. The Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction, approximately 65 million years ago, famous for ending the reign of dinosaurs, likely caused by an asteroid impact and volcanic activity. Each extinction opened new opportunities for surviving species to diversify and evolve. Many scientists believe we are living in a sixth mass extinction today, driven by human activity. Deforestation, pollution, habitat destruction, and climate change are causing species to disappear at alarming rates. Mass extinctions remind us that life on Earth is fragile. While past extinctions were caused by natural forces, today, humans are the biggest force of change. Understanding this history helps us protect biodiversity for future generations. Fossils give us a window into the distant past. They are the preserved remains, imprints, or traces of organisms that lived millions of years ago. By studying fossils, scientists can reconstruct Earth's history, learn how life evolved, and even identify extinct species. Fossils are most commonly found in sedimentary rocks. These rocks form when particles of clay, sand, and mud are carried by wind or water and over thousands of years settle in layers that harden into rock. But fossils can also be preserved in tree resin, such as amber in ice, or even in volcanic lava. Not every organism becomes a fossil. Certain conditions make fossilization more likely. The organism must be buried immediately after death. The sediment must be acidic and lack oxygen, slowing down decay. The organism should have hard body parts like shells, teeth, or exoskeletons. Let's look step by step at how fossils form in sedimentary rocks. First, the plant or animal dies and is quickly buried by sediment. Bacteria and microorganisms decompose the soft tissues. Hard body parts remain, and minerals slowly replace the organic material, turning them into stone. Over time, more layers of sediment cover the remains. Pressure compresses the sediments into rock, locking the fossil within. Once fossils are discovered, scientists need to know how old they are. This is done through fossil dating methods. There are two main approaches, radiometric dating and relative dating. Radiometric dating uses instruments to measure the amount of radioactive elements, such as uranium or carbon, in fossils or the rocks surrounding them. The more the radioactive element has decayed, the older the fossil. Carbon-14 dating is used for fossils less than 50,000 years old. For fossils older than 50,000 years, scientists date the surrounding rocks instead. The second method is relative dating. Sedimentary rock forms in layers, with the oldest layers at the bottom and the youngest at the top. This means fossils found deeper down are older, while those closer to the surface are younger. Relative dating doesn't give an exact age, but it does provide a sequence of events. In summary, fossils are the preserved record of life's history, formed under special conditions and trapped in Earth's rocks. By using radiometric and relative dating, scientists can place these fossils on the great timeline of evolution. Fossils remind us that life on Earth is ancient, ever-changing, and still full of mysteries waiting to be uncovered.